Hi, welcome to my studio. This is my home studio. It's actually my husband's sculpture studio. Um, today I wanted to talk about something that I do a lot in my artwork, which is um, encaustic painting, but not just that. It's scratching and incising and scraping away the paint to reveal really cool textures. And I have several tools that I really like working with that I've worked with um, a lot. And then I also have some new tools that I'm gonna try out and, and show you guys today. So I can't wait. All right, welcome to my video all about scratching and scraping and incising onto encaustic painting. So this, these techniques are something that I do a lot because it adds a different kind of um, dimension and texture. So in addition to positive, uh, you know, additional painting, so this is, I painted on the encaustic uh, paint. This is some um, Posca pens that I've put on to the surface. There's collage. So these are all kind of additive, positive um, ways of working. There's also methods where you can scrape back, you can scratch into the wax and add things like um, oil pastels. And you've probably seen me do that a lot if you've seen any of my videos. And today I wanted to show you a couple of new tools that I got to do that. Diamond core tools. Usually I use these um, scratching tools for ceramic. They're called styluses or little scratchers and those will yield a very nice thin line but i also at times wanted to get a thicker line and these diamond core tools are also designed for ceramic but they have these very sharp little blades and you can actually adjust the the um angle so this one's a curved angle and I can loosen up the screws and actually tilt it if it fits better in my hand to scrape one direction. If I wanted to do, you know, more pointy lines or more kind of delicate or more thicker lines, depending on how I'm working, I can adjust this. And I've also got this one, which is the same thing, except that it's just got like a little, um, like a lip or a little got like a little lip or a little kind of hook on the end and that's also for scraping or pushing. So the other tool that I like to use for making deeper lines or that I have used in the past are linoleum gouges and those do just what you would think they gouge out so you have to go this way with the tool and just like this they're like a v-shape but you kind of carve out and away from yourself which for me is not conducive to drawing and making nice lines and marks so I wanted to try these out and see how you know what the difference was so I've got those to try and I've also um, got several different types of loop tools this one is also for ceramics but you can use them definitely for wax and this one is a wider scraper loop tool and they're designed they have kind of a blade and they're designed to just go along the surface and scrape back so you can get the really wide ones you can get different shapes if you want to do different you know um, marks I like this one because it's got sort of a softer edge but it's also got a pointy edge so I can get really right up onto a, an edge and make a straighter line this one is smaller so it's the same thing it's just a looped uh, tool that has that metal or that wire um, blade and this is nicer because or nice for several reasons because I can get again really fine detail I can go right up to this edge and scrape back it's harder when it's cool so we'll um, I'll show you when it's a little bit warmer but it's got two different kind of edges one for really kind of getting in there and then like a more smoother straighter one but these are really good too so ceramic supply stores have a lot of options this one is really just for carving really uh, thin lines the, the um, 
I guess, issue or the one characteristic of the stylus is that it really just pushes. It doesn't carve because it's not a blade. So it pushes down into the wax, which results in kind of a burr or a bump. And sometimes you get debris, the wax debris caught in the line, which is kind of tedious. So um, it's really nice for getting delicate um, line work. I'll show you a, a painting that I did with it. So this is an example of the, the incised line. I carved the shape, just looking at a picture, just carved into the wax and then rubbed the oil pastel into it. You can do oil paint too, and then wiped off the excess and I'll demonstrate that. Um, but it's really kind of looks like an intaglio etching and I really like that. It works well if the surface is smooth and it's been fused within like a half an hour. So you don't want it to be cold, um, but you don't want it to be really, really warm so that it, it goes too deep or you get too kind of globby. So I've got this painting and what I want to do first is kind of put down something to scrape back. So this is a kind of a thin um, layer. I've got some collage. I've got some uh, additive painting and some encaustic medium and but there's only like four or five layers so for doing incising you really want you know five six seven eight nine ten layers so that you don't carve too shallowly and then end up hitting like stuff underneath so I like to carve um, after a few layers that's not to say that you can't carve and then add layers uh, I do that a lot too but I'll show you some different techniques for scraping and different effects that might be kind of cool. Um, so I've got this sort of area and what I want to do, I think, is kind of cover that and then scrape it back. And you can see what that would look like. So this is really fun if you've got multiple color layers. Um, so because I've already got this pink, I'm going to add, let's add like a gray kind of a grayish and I'm going to use a stencil my little house stencil for here and just use the gray paint that right on over the top and this is one of the best characteristics of wax and caustic painting is that no matter how many layers you put on, you can always scrape them back and kind of start fresh. So peel off the stencil while it's still warm. And now while it's still kind of warm, I haven't fused it yet. But I'm going to take my wider loop tool and just start dragging it across the surface. And you see it's already picking up some of the deep wax there. Come on, poke them. And I can be careful and I can start to see kind of the layer underneath coming through. So I can do this as a, you know, repair. I can do this as a texture. This is really versatile. So say you wanted to get sort of a mottled look with one color underneath. I do this with white a lot. You put that one color down first and then you scrape back the top color. And you get this sort of soft texture that you wouldn't be able to get with anything else. You know, you can't paint over it and have it look this way. Now, if you scrape back too much, then you might have to go back over it. So This is the wider loop tool. So, 
at that point, if I liked it, what I want to do is fuse it. So, just lightly fuse. Just enough to kind of not lose the edges, but embed it in there. And then say I wanted to kind of clean up and sharpen that edge, I could take my smaller loop tool while it's still fairly warm. Come in. And remove. Here he is. So it's almost like you're erasing. There we go. And different tools, of course, will produce different strokes, different edges. So I have quite a few I've collected or made. All right, so that's one kind of scraping method. Another way you can use those loop tools is to lay down like a ground of, of some kind. For instance, India ink. So I've got some waterproof India ink and I'm gonna do a little sort of that and then before it's dry or I mean you can wait till it's dry but I kind of want to get a like a slightly smeary look so I'm gonna take a rag and sort of smear it of course you wouldn't have to do this you could just go right to scraping but gives like a really cool texture when you, as it's drying. And depending on what um, texture is underneath the, like what kind of texture is already there in the wax, you can get some pretty cool uh, sort of rubbings, you know. Oops. All right. So we can speed it up by drying with a, like a, an air dryer or a hair dryer, um, or we could just go right to scraping. So. If you wanted to define any lines or you wanted to, again, remove any of the surface, I could just take this little loop tool. And because it hasn't been fused and it's just like right on the surface, I can do kind of some scratching. I just laid it on the side. I can scratch it. I can kind of remove it completely if I wanted to. And all that sort of scratchy... Um, the shininess that's coming from the scratching, when, as soon as you um, fuse it, it'll go away. So you can get, again, kind of like a reverse erasing mark. If I wanted to have a harder edge, you know, I just wanted to take off more, I could use the, the wider loop tool and actually take a bunch more off and because this was underneath if I don't scratch too hard I can kind of keep that there we go okay so that's kind of cool so I've got a combination of the ink that's been sort of smeared, the ink that's been scratched. You could take your um, little stylus also and scratch into it. And the nice thing about doing this with, uh, with the India ink versus doing this in like a wax, if you laid a wax ground on, is that you're just scratching off the India ink. You're not scratching off the wax. So if I was gonna scratch through this, you know, I'd be pulling wax up, which you can see 
comes, you know, I, I'm bringing up the all that wax paint. So you can also get similar textures and marks if you have two colors. So if I have like a gray underneath and a pink on top and I scratch away, you get the under color showing through, but it's a little bit messier um, just because of the nature of the wax. But in any case, that is how another way that you can use the stylus and remove or kind of erase, get like an eraser mark. And then if you like that, again, we'll just take our uh, torch and lightly, lightly fuse it because we don't want it to move around. We want to keep all those really pretty marks and scratches but i don't know if you can see it but i can see that the surface is starting to even out and the scratchy texture is kind of blending in uh, together so um, it's kind of evening out that way All right so now the last uh, way that i want to kind of show you how I scratch is with my diamond core tools. And these are really nice. So this surface is already nice and warm. This is a little cooler, um, but these are so sharp that I don't really need a warm, warm surface. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go, I'm dragging it right now with kind of a direction. There we go, and you can see it pulls up a, a little, like extrudes a ribbon of wax. But the nice thing is, it doesn't leave any burr or anything. It's a totally smooth uh, lined surface, which is awesome. So I can keep doing that. I can keep making scratchy marks. I can keep gouging just dragging across the surface. They make different um, widths. You know, this is a V gouge or a V um, tool. They also make U tools if you wanted to remove more of an area. Um, so I just keep kind of pulling it out. Right. And if I don't push too hard, then I'm just getting a um, thin line. But if I push deep, push harder, I'm getting a deeper line. So I can really get a lot of area removed if I wanted to. There we go. And then, the reason why we're doing this is we're going to rub some some oil pastel or oil paint into here. This one, let's see. This one, I can, I probably want to reposition it just a little bit, but I can like scrape forward like a linoleum carving tool, or I can drag it. And I can angle it if I want to get, again, more of like a, a loop where I'm kind of scraping an edge, which is really nice. Really get that solid, sharp edge. Um, or I can use it for lines. Once you use your tools with wax, it's really hard to use them for other things. You could heat them with a torch um, and then it kind of melts away, but you never really get, gets entirely rid of it. So once you figure out if you want your, um, you know, your tools to be used with wax, I would just say that's, that's it and leave it at that. Leave them for wax. Mm 
I'm pushing not so much. Dragging, I think, is a little bit easier for this one. All right, so now that I've got my sort of etched line, what I want to do is choose a color. And if I wanted to contrast with this dark, maybe I'll choose like a bright pink. That could be kind of fun. And I'm using a relatively soft hot oil pastel. And I want to do this part when it's cooler. I don't want to do this part when it's warm. Otherwise, I'll just end up smashing my line, my nice and sized line. Um, what I'm trying to do is fill it in with this oil pastel. And oil paint and a brush works really well too for this because it just goes into the line and it's really easy to wipe off afterwards. So, let's see what this This one might be better. It's more pointy. Some oil pastels, of course, are softer than others, so they're easier to get in there. Some of them that are harder, meaning the actual material is harder, they are harder to get in. Because they just don't want to smush. And for the removal, I like to use a rag. There's lots of different materials you could use to wipe the surface. What you don't want is to leave lint. So if you have a paper towels or a rag that's really sort of cottony or terry clothy, you don't want really want to use that. I find that sort of this cotton shirting fabric is really good. Um, you might try polyester. I'm not sure how well that would actually hold the oil pastel but what we're gonna do is wipe off the surface color so right now I've mushed it into the grooves and then to really get the sense of the incised line I'm gonna take this old cotton shirt and wipe And what that does is it leaves the uh, pastel that's on the that's in the grooves, but it removes everything else that's on top on the surface. And you can choose how much you want to leave. You know, you can wipe a lot, you can wipe a little, you can leave some on the surface if you want it to look kind of smeary and smudgy. If you are having trouble wiping or it's just sticking too much, then I like to use a little bit of oil, like uh, linseed oil or, you know, any real kind of oil, baby oil. That will help wipe it off the surface. And then, again, we fuse. Very lightly. Just enough to kind of embed it in there. That way it won't wipe off. So that's pretty much it. See the, you can see how it is in the grooves and the different thicknesses of lines make it look really cool. Choosing the right color to contrast is often my, the hardest part for me. Um, but, <laughs> oh, the other thing, oh, I, I did already use this one. Um, but you can also do the same thing with the scratching and the um, filling in with that too. 
I mean, pretty much any tool that's going to gouge it, you could try to use. Um, but just make sure that there's sufficient layers of wax so that it doesn't gouge down to the bottom of your panel. So experiment, have some fun, and I hope that gave you a lot of inspiration for scraping and incising and scratching into your encaustic paintings.